Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to share some quick tips on how to create a custom scatter brush. So by scatter brush, I mean a brush that behaves kind of like this. It's one object that repeats, but there's a bunch of them and they rotate and you could also change the scale of them too as you're painting them in. So that is exactly what we're going to create. I'm going to walk you through my custom brush settings to make a brush behave this way. And this one has a watercolor look to it. So we're going to be using my watercolor illustration brush set for this. And you can really use any colors you'd like. So there's no set color palette for this. I'm going to create this brush on a canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is totally fine okay I've got that new square canvas all ready to go and whenever you're creating a new shape for a brush it has to be white on a black background you could do black on a white background and then invert it later but it's just so much easier to just have it exactly the way that procreate likes it so that's how we're going to program it right here because they need to be more Merge together when we create this brush you have to put a black background on a separate layer than your background color layer normally when you're just creating regular artwork you can set your background color for this but because this is a shape of a brush we need to have our black on a layer separate from the background color so on this layer one I'm just going to come up to my color dot double tap where the black is to get true black and then just drag it into the canvas and now I've got my black background and then we're going to create a brand new layer and on this layer we're going to paint whatever you would like to paint for your brush so mine is going to be that daisy and this has to be painted white so come to your colors double tap where the white is and that gives you true white I'm going to paint using the watercolor illustration brush set like I mentioned so I'm in my watercolor illustration brush set I'm going to grab and use my medium paint round you can turn on your guidelines if it's a little easier to see where your center is that way you can maximize the size within the canvas so if you come up here to the wrench canvas drawing guide edit drawing guide all you want to do is take this grid size and pop it all the way up and obviously we can't see it because it's a dark color on black so if you just toggle up here you can grab white and that will change your guideline to white and I'm going to increase the opacity and thicken it up so you can see it really well on screen so then I'm going to hit done and I'm going to paint the center of my flower right in the center of my canvas so the center of my flower is just going to be a bunch of dots so I'm just going to stipple in here and now I can paint in my petals and you can either use the symmetry settings if you would like or you can just paint it freehand I'm going to paint mine freehand and I'm actually going to make my center a little bit larger because how big you're able to paint with your brush will be determined by how much space your item takes up within this canvas so if I draw my flower so it's almost touching every edge then I can maximize my ability to use it at a really large scale in other procreate artwork so that's why I'm increasing the size of my center just so I can have a larger overall size okay so now I'm just going to paint in my daisies so these are just teardrop shapes and I'm just going to come all the way around and paint these in, so I'll speed up the video. So there's my really big flower. And now that I have this all set, we can turn off our guides if we don't want to see those anymore and just come to your wrench and toggle off drawing guide. And now in order to use this and create the brush with it, we need to merge our shape which is the flower here along with the background and if you ever want to make changes in the future I like keeping a copy of this before it's merged because once it's merged you can't get rid of the background very easily so I always just make a copy of whatever shape I've made and then just turn off the visibility of it that way I've got it here if I ever want to tweak it in the future so now we're going to merge this original one with the background black color so I'm just going to pinch these together and now they're merged and now I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose copy and we're going to create a brand new canvas now that is the exact same size as this one the 1500 by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi I've got the new canvas so now let's make this brush I've created a brush category which you can create a brush category if you scroll all the way to the top and then you hit the little plus you can create a brand new brush category for whatever you want and I created one here called experiments and this is what I use 
to for all the brushes that I'm playing around with and creating. So we're going to create a brand new brush. So I'm just going to hit the plus sign up here. And we're going to use a lot of the default settings that Procreate gives us for a brand new brush, but we're we're definitely going to make some changes. So first we need to bring in that shape that we just created. So come over here to the shape category, hit edit, and then hit import and choose paste. And that will paste in what we just created and then hit done. So now if I draw with it, you can see it's just super close together. I can't even tell what it is. So we need to separate it. We need to add some spacing between all of these copies. And that's found over here under stroke path. You're just going to increase your spacing. I'm going to come up to 50% here. And when we do that, you'll see it take effect over here. So now we've got like this daisy chain. And if we want a little bit of jitter to it, which I like adding jitter, especially if you're using this as a border element or if you're masking it into text, it can look pretty cool if it's got a little bit of a jitter to it. So my jitter, I'm going to bring up to 75%. And you can see right away what that does. It scatters it a bit. Now we're going to rotate each individual element because right now, wherever it's repeated, it's the same exact orientation. And even though we've got one item repeated a bunch, we can trick the viewer's eye a little bit into making them think that we've got more than just one type of daisy that's just repeated everywhere. And a really easy way to do that is just to add a little bit of randomized rotation. So if we come back to our shape settings, right here we can rotate it and you can choose how much you wanna rotate it and as we toggle this up, you'll notice over here all of these begin to rotate. So you can come up a little ways. I'm going to come up to about 25%. And you can always write it in here too with your stylus. And then if you want it to be denser, you can increase the, the count, the amount, so it can get really out of control there. I like leaving mine at one right here, but you can do that. And if you want it to just automatically jitter the amount that's in certain areas so it can get denser in other areas, you can do that with the count jitter. I'm going to leave mine at none, but that could be a really cool effect if you are making a border and you want it a little denser in some areas. And then just a couple other options if you want them. Procreate already has pressure sensitivity built into this. So when I'm drawing with it, it'll change the opacity. So when I draw really lightly, it'll be really light. And when I press down really hard, it'll be more opaque. And if you wanna change that, you can just come to Apple Pencil and choose a lower opacity right here. So it'll, you're telling Procreate, don't change the opacity on me whenever I'm adding pressure or reducing pressure. So now if I'm drawing really lightly, it's full opacity. If I toggle this all the way up, you can see now it's very light. So you can play around with the opacity settings there if you don't want it to fade in and fade out based on pressure. You can do the same thing with size. So they can get smaller and bigger depending on pressure, which can be pretty fun. I'm going to put mine at 25% here. I like a little bit of variety. And then the last thing which can be really fun is color dynamics. If you come to color dynamics, you can change the color of each individual daisy that shows up. And that's under the stamp color jitter. Since this is a scatter brush, we're using a stamp that's repeated. So this is the setting that you'll want. And in order to show you this, I'm going to clear the drawing pad and change the color. I'm going to change it to pink so you can see the difference. So right now, if I paint this in, I just have regular pink. If I change the hue just 25%, you'll see that these all changed color. So now every instance of my little daisy has a little bit of different color in it. So that's a really easy way to introduce variation. You can also increase the saturation, the lightness, the darkness, and if you're using a secondary color, you can have that change take effect as well. I like just having a subtle hue. Actually, I'm gonna bring mine down to 20. That way it stays in the same color family because if this is up too far, even if it comes up to 50, when you have different colors, see now I'm getting like some yellows and almost greens in here and I like keeping it in the same color family. So that's why I usually keep mine a little bit lower, but totally flexible, whatever you wanna do right there. So that's that's it here. This is These are the main settings that I use whenever I'm making a scatter brush. So I can hit done and now let's use it a little bit. You can also name it. Let me come back in here. If you wanna name it, just come over to about this brush and I can change the name to Daisy scatter and now we've got our daisy scatter brush okay so let me show you how to do some stuff with it i'm going to just grab a random purple color 
and I'll show you, we'll do a border. So I'm going to come down to a smaller size. I'm going to come to like 25%, 24% and put some little daisies in the corner. And then we can scale it up just a little bit more. And I'm going to go lower opacity now and put some around and then make it really big and low opacity so they're in the background as well. And that's just a super quick border and then you can put whatever you want on the inside. If we want to make a wreath, I'm going to reduce the size of this. Let me create a brand new layer and turn the first layer off. We can just draw a circle, hold it, let it snap. For this one, all we have to do to remove the jitter and make it more wreath-like, we'd come back into the brush settings and go to stroke path and just toggle down jitter all the way, hit done. Let me create a brand new layer. And now if I hold it, you can see, and I would probably turn off the size change that's affected by pressure. And then you could have a uniform daisy wreath too. So it's a really, really quick way to make a wreath. And if we separated these even more, you can manually draw in some leaves around it too and really fill it out. So that's, that's pretty fun and really easy way to make a wreath. We'll bring this back up to 75. Okay, let's create a brand new layer and I'm going to show you the last one with adding some lettering. So my background is white right now. So if I add some white lettering and then use a clipping mask for our stamp, then it'll look like the entire lettering is made up of the stamp and it wasn't actually drawn beforehand. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. I'm just going to drop a random color onto this one as the background and this is temporary. It can be any color you want. Then create a brand new layer right above it. Change this one to white if you're using a white background or whatever background color you're deciding to use. I'm going to keep a white one for this. And then grab your favorite lettering brush. I'm going to use my signature brush and then write whatever word that you wanna mask into. Okay, I've got my word. I'm just going to move it so it's a little more centered here. Make it a little straighter. All right, so now we've got our lettering, or you can use typable text here. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. And then let's say we're going to do some like blue flowers. I think I wanna do some blue flowers. So I'm going to grab a blue and I'm going to grab a color that's over here. That way it's got some saturation and a little bit of darkness too, a little bit of black in it. So I'm gonna come right around here and I like that that gives me some really nice punchy colors for this. And then we're going to grab the new brush that we just made and we can just paint randomly on top of it in different areas. And then I'm going to switch to darker blue, add this in, and we just wanna make sure we're covering enough area where you're going to be able to read the word. So now I'm gonna come into purple. So I'm just keeping it in the like blues and teals and purple area. All right, so now this is the fun part. This is like the grand reveal. So we're going to get rid of this solid purple color because we don't need it anymore. We only put that in there so we could see ourselves writing in the exact same color as the final background color. So I can just delete that now. And now we can't see our lettering, but we're going to mask this into our lettering. So just tap on the layer thumbnail, choose clipping mask, and there we go. And you can add, just make sure you're still drawing on that layer if you want to add any more and to make it really obvious what the word is. So that's how to quickly and easily make your own custom scatter brush directly in Procreate. Once again, a link to my watercolor illustration brush set is right in the video description. So just tap in there and you can have access to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week.